about 30% of parishes were asking for the one thing to help them was a reduction in share or some reimbursement, which of course uh, there's some money being given back to parishes. And uh, about 20% of parishes were unsure about what help they needed. Uh, in, in lockdown. So that was our initial view, which I suppose my thinking was we're a bit more resilient than I thought we'd be facing lockdown. I don't know where you picture yourself, your parish, your, your resources in that survey. We then sent one out more recently, uh, a quicker survey. I think we've learned something from that. And about 50-50 clergy and treasurers responded. It only went to clergy and treasurers, about 78 in total. And 60% of parishes are now speaking about giving and generosity more than once a year, uh, but less than monthly. So, uh, and that again is a bit more than I'd thought. I thought many churches might have one day a year when they make it their giving Sunday or whatever, uh, but more people are, are doing that than I'd thought. More are comfortable about giving than not, uh, than, they're, than they're uncomfortable. Um, and that's not minimising. Many people still find this a very uncomfortable issue to talk about, which is why we're doing these webinars. That's what it's all about. How can we feel a bit more comfortable about it? But more actually were comfortable than not. Uh, also, more felt they were successful or somewhat successful in their moves to encourage towards digital giving, online giving, new forms of giving during lockdown than were not. Still a lot were finding that very difficult or felt it wasn't something for them. And more are ready for digital giving than not. So again, there's already been a move in that direction. When I talk about digital giving, I tend in my mind to think about all forms of online giving, including standing orders. Uh, that may not be strictly correct. So I'm thinking about everything other than checks and cash. So moving away from checks and cash, how do we give? So that's a bit of the uh, the story there. What is stopping you promoting digital giving options on your website and on social media? Of course, some people didn't have a website that they were using uh, and weren't using social media. So there was a lot of comments in the other box. 30% were happy with things the way they were. 40% are introducing digital giving and getting on with it. So again, the question wasn't quite uh, for them. And 30% were put off by their congregation's age group, the demographic. And what that really made me think about uh, sitting on an iceberg, I'll come back to that at the end, an iceberg that's actually shrinking. Because if you're just ministering or just communicating with one group of people, older people who are not interested in digital giving, we're not just wanting to change them or not at all, uh, making life more difficult for them. But there's a whole community around us that we're not engaging with and we're not providing the means for them. And as long as we don't engage with them, we're on an iceberg that's shrinking financially and in terms of influence. So we're going to come back to that near the end, what we can, can do about that. These are some of the things you told us, which fortunately we're already planning to address some of these. And this gives you some uh, picture. Uh, yeah, many people did want help, more resources on the website. They want help with preaching and teaching. Um, more people wanted help with setting up a giving page, a whole page, and more people again wanted a giving button, help with how you do that, uh, and then with how you communicate uh, the giving message online, Facebook, people wanted that. But a lot of people wanted help with just how do you communicate at all? So not just online, but how do you communicate about with your parishioners about increasing or reviewing their giving? which is where that storytelling information will be so uh, useful and so important. Let's give a pause there, see if there's any questions come up that we need to, to talk uh, hi. about. Hi, Mark, there's no questions so far. No questions so far, okay, so I can go on. The main nub of what we're saying really now is it's not over yet. I, I got the feeling, and you can tell me if I'm right or not, that many people just thought we've got a few months to get through and then the cash would come back and we'd have to just repair the gap up would be out of the problem. What we're saying and understanding is we're not there yet. Uh, there's still a challenge. The 
challenge of handling cash physically. There's an actual health issue here. Uh, this is from Welsh Government. Faith leaders should discourage cash giving and continue to use online giving and resources where possible, minimizing contact around transactions. So that's the official advice from the Welsh Government, also from uh, the British Government. But the Welsh Government have repeated that more emphatically, in fact. I was on a meeting last week with people, colleagues from Church of England and uh, cathedrals in England staff, they have to legally open, they must open by law in England now, and they are, the staff are not allowed to accept cash gifts from members of the public because of the potential health contact risk. So if you want to give a cathedral in England, you must drop it into a sealed box. The box is then taken away and left for 72 hours before it's counted, and that's the advice we're giving. If you do take cash, put it somewhere safe, just leave it for 72 hours uh, when there'll be uh, uh, almost a zero infection risk and that will be safe. So the idea that cash and checks are just gonna come flooding back in, there are real issues for us. Uh, whether you're a young person or a vulnerable person, you could be spreading or getting an infection from cash presently and that's the official advice. A challenge two, of course, is the main one that will exercise all of us, I think, is how do we recover the income streams? There's this massive hole in our budgets. All rental, wedding fees, fundraisers are gone and uh, people are struggling. Um, many parishes, was, or one parish was seeing a deficit of 6,200 per month. So they were using six, over 6,000 pounds of their reserves every month during lockdown many parishes a thousand pounds a month and some churches i have been saying parishes but actually it's churches have had no income at all during lockdown they relied totally on cash giving one has decided not to reopen that may be a temporary decision but at the moment they're feeling uh, they've got to review their future but there are some tremendous heartening stories uh, coming up uh, one church uh, many of the people have moved to standing order giving to keep their church open. And one of the neighbours of this little church in one of our valleys uh, who didn't want to see their church close has also set up a standing order to the church and they don't attend. Uh, one of our wardens, who is very careful, wears a mask everywhere in public, um, uh, had people have stopped him in the street. He's a well-known figure, and given him uh, an envelope with cash to give to the church. So there's some heartening stories. What support can you access from us? And really, this is about are we doing as much as we can to help you? And only you can really inspire us with what we need to do. What are we doing now? And the first one we've talked about a very clear message of Gift Direct. We're supporting that message. Many treasurers have put on their feedback either carry on what you're doing because it strengthens our message, or they want more help with that, with the fact that people are, are reluctant to set up standing orders and what can we do to help them and many of these sessions will be about that. So since between the 19th and 20th of July I found another way of looking at that. There's an actual increase of 142. That's because some people have stopped. Uh, about 142 appears to be uh, the figure we've ended up with more than on the 19th of July. I suspect some people at end of the donation also set up another one, actually increasing it. Uh, there's 8% more cash coming in through Gift Direct now than there was at the beginning on the 19th of March. And it was going up anyway through January. So that's good news. The Church of England has seen a 28% rise, but, but we don't need to feel too bad about that because they're starting from a much lower point than us. And uh, about 160 parishes have just joined that weren't using the scheme and some dioceses weren't using their scheme in England. So they're finding the same thing about as us. This is the major thing to push. We of course have no figures for standing orders, new standing orders, increased standing orders. But we know many of you are finding people are reaching out to you and setting up a new standing order. So the action from us, the action from you is keep on talking about it. On your Facebook pages, on your website, when you speak, uh, find a way of 
putting that message in, you can still give, you can move to Gift Direct. Um, uh, keep on talking about it on your newsletters, put it in there. And we need to think about a way that that doesn't appear we're just banging on about it, but are constantly reminding people and pointing to this as something we can do. Grant Finder is still there to help you find grants. We know there's going to be more challenges. Many grant making bodies have moved their money to emergency support and getting money for your church roof maybe will be more challenging, we've been told right across the country because people have moved, but the money is still there. Grant Finder can help. Um, John Durley and myself, if we know what you're doing and what you're interested in doing, we can send you information that comes to us, to our inbox about grants, if we know what you're doing. If we don't, we, we can't. Um, we can do an individual search for you if you email the uh, address on the screen. I think Gareth is going to put that in the, in the chat and have that available for you. Uh, put what you're doing, and Brian is back now. She's particularly good at this. She'll do a search for you. And we're also looking at a new search tool uh, to see if that will help us specifically for churches, if that would be better. If it is better, we will get it for you. We'll make that available. Then we have fundraising consultants still available. Helen has raised hundreds of thousands for churches over the last year, year and a half, and she's still available to help and uh, is still working and available to help you. Of course, we've got our own ministry support scheme, our own new grant streams from the DBF as a made available emergency hardship grant support. Some of that came from the generous gifts that came into the Dyson office the minute lockdown happened, people were giving to us in order to give to parishes. And uh, there was very generous support. There's actually still £90,000 in that account. It's slowly building up. I do hope over the next few weeks we'll be making, uh, donate, making grants every week. I think we could be getting close to that. Do look at that. Do have a look at the links and the website. Um, it's now gone up to two and a half thousand pounds. You can claim and you can come back for more uh, if you need that. Uh, Generosity Matters has been launched during lockdown, a slightly different way of communicating. We'd like to know how helpful that is. Would you like that to be made more available to other people? And increasingly, we'll be able to know uh, how long people are spending reading it. Are people reading it? Are they interacting with those things? which will be really helpful for you and for us. Our website is there. We're very proud of this. And this is really the place where we will store and put all the information that we think you need. If you need something and it's not there, get in contact with us. I still, on some of this, are encouraging people to talk directly to myself or Sarah Perons about some grants because we need to know what you're doing and what's happening. And that's really helpful. But on the whole, we will be putting everything on our website and the resources and again in one of those feedback questions people wanted more resources there to help them and so we'll be populating that uh, with more and more uh, help as time goes on including videos and things that you can show and podcasts a range of media uh, available i want to just end my bit and then we can get into a bit of discussion uh, i noticed uh, father michael gable has joined us i think that was right it was him that recommended I read this book, which I then, I bought it and read it. And we had a bit of an email discussion about it uh, because I believe that helped inform some of the work we've done on thinking about forming ministry area in Pontiff Priest. Our iceberg is melted by John Cotter. And that came to my mind when I thought, if we're just working with one part of the community, uh, which is uh, shrinking, because older people who are retiring now will be far more used to giving online as people move through and change. So we will be alienating most of our community if we don't change the way we make giving available, particularly during lockdown, as, as made this clear. So uh, there's eight points in that, which is far more clever than I am. I can't do that. I'm going to do four, which in my view is one too many. You always have three points. Uh, so I'm going to amalgamate them together, very quickly go through it create a sense of urgency. And that's a bit of what I've been doing today. Trying to not panic, just urgency. We need to do something. Uh, find some allies. Find some allies that will help you make some changes 
in the parish in the PCC. Be clear and concise in your communications and Matt and Noel is helping me and helping us uh, will be there to, to help us to train us to be clearer on our messages. Work on problems, don't be put off. You will hit problems. You'll hit things that don't work. Uh, no mobile signal, uh, poor web connection, all these things. But don't stop, get around them, share from other people. We, we hope to have, some people have offered to just do a very quick slot in some of our sessions saying, I hit this problem, this is how I overcame it, and I'm happy to people to ring me uh, with text giving, for instance. Um, some people have overcome problems. So help is there, don't just stop with the problem, keep moving through them and keep going until things really change. Okay, so that's my presentation, that's my bit, that's my uh, initial input. What we really need is discussion from you and to hear from uh, you and hopefully to answer some questions and share some of what you've done and how you've dealt with coming out of lockdown. Mark, thank you very much. I know we have got some questions and Gareth's going to uh, read those out for you in a moment. I just wanted to add something to the last thing that you talked about was uh, the iceberg is melting and some of the things that Mark spoke about in that last slide, particularly around a narrative and a sense of urgency and communicating, those are exactly the kind of things that we're going to be running through over the next six um, courses of our generous team webinar um, and as I said earlier in the session we'll be bringing in people who can help us think about how we can construct a narrative and how we can get encourage more people through marketing skills but also through the way that we talk as well and I think the next session that we'll be hosting is around preaching and talking about um, generosity and giving. Uh, Gareth I think there is a question that uh, that you were going to read out. Yes we have one question from Colin Rossiter uh, he asks, why have we not received gifts direct updates so that we can see who has been signed up? The office in Cardiff has not sent any updates. I was told staff were working from home, but in this digital age, I was hoping to get some info in our benefits. I think that's a really good point. Mark, is there anything you wanted to add? Because I, I just want to add something afterwards. Yeah, I, th I think we'll have to pass that back to them. That's very helpful. I, I was, again, I was on, um, we were invited, some of us were invited to the Church of England meetings and they had the person from their version. They certainly are trying to give live or fairly good information back to parishes fairly quickly. So they're struggling with that as well, but did seem to be solving it. So all I can do is go back to the RB and ask, uh, what's happening um, and how they can can help you with that. Uh, all I can see by the way in case you're worried by my figures is I can see every day the numbers. I don't know who's giving what. But I know what what cash, what money is being given whether they're taxpayers or not taxpayers. I can see that uh, every day changing and by taking a screenshot I can see that changes but uh, I don't see any confidential information at all. Uh, I just wanted to add that I do think it would be a fantastic idea if we find out who does, um, who has signed up to gift direct as uh, I was one of those numbers and I would have loved to have received a thank you card or something from the parish that I was giving. It's one of those little, those little um, kind things that um, lots of organisations do to thank you for, for donating. And I think if we can get hold of that information, that's a tactic that we could use to encourage people and just to thank them to say we really appreciate your gift and in that thank you note it could be reinforcing what the what the money is going towards yeah. and um, also encouraging people to sign up to give their time as well and donate time they've given money perhaps they could donate time as well there's a lot of good stuff going on in our communities i think it's really important when um we talk about giving that we look at the opportunities to thank people as well for their gen generosity it just reinforces and, and creates a, a sense of um of thanksgiving as well for people i think that would be a great idea I can add Matt, normally the RB system does produce the thank you notes. I don't quite know what is going on now that people are working from home, whether that process has been impacted, but we can definitely 
follow that up and see what's yeah. going on in Tannum Square. I should say there is a letter does go uh, and I did receive a letter I think that personal touch is is hugely important so if I had something from the the parish that I'd um, nice, given yeah. to I think that would have meant quite a lot and perhaps it would have meant more to to others as well. Um, I'd, not sure we've got any other questions, but I've got a couple. Have I one want... more question. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, Gareth. So, uh, from Michael Gable, who says, "What's the impact on GADs if we move to a more digital giving system?" Yeah, so I come back to that, or Jen, I, I'll come uh, back. Can um, you define GADs, please, for those who may not? Yeah, know that yeah, happening? yeah. Uh, GADs is Gift Aid Small Donation Scheme. There's two schemes the Inland Revenue uh, allow us to. One is the Gift Aid which is where you get the tax given back to the, chari to the charity. Um, gift aid, small donations, whilst it's linked to tax, it's not actually the tax coming back. It is a, a, a grant being made by in their revenue. So it's where you don't know who's giving. You've got a cash donation that you can claim 25% back on the cash as if it was gift aid. And it's a big, big uh, income for those cash donations. A digital giving tap to go because that's defined as cash now uh, is included but texts are not and checks are not uh, so as far as I know text giving and uh, check giving are uh, excluded or they are excluded um, the impact certainly each I don't think many of us will hit this problem completely but um, the um, if we move completely to the RB claim about tax on our behalf, we wouldn't be able to get the, the GADs because a parish, a charity has to get some, have some gift aid coming in in order to get the small donation scheme. Uh, so this is why we're not recommending people move from standing orders over. It's a new people coming in really, or, or for a new gift, because we know some people give by standing order and by gift away too. Um, so we, we do need to monitor it. Um, and, and think, but cash is disappearing, although that be replaced by digital giving, by tap to go and so on. So it's, it's something to watch. Um, at the moment, um, we're losing more of all sources, really, uh, and the most reliable. I, I, was, well, I, won't, I won't say any more, I'll just say that there. I, I think we're going to watch. Yeah, is the sector as a whole, the charitable sector, our campaigning to HMRC? to increase the 25% um, reclaim rates to 33. Now in the past they have done that. So again, then it's a potential opportunity that there will be a higher callback, but that's in consultation and they are, as I say, consulting with government at the moment. Okay, uh, we have two other questions at the moment. Uh, John Hall has asked, which church benefits has a task and finish group looking at online giving and text-based donations? However, there are some people who do not use tech, but the negative messages about cash are off-putting. How can we positively encourage those that can or will only use cash? Yeah, shall I just have a go again? Sorry to keep going back in. Um, the, I think there's a genuine issue. I, I saw only this week somebody talking about the, uh, the sinister side of a cashless society, i.e. the worry that the state is going to know everything we're doing, everything we're buying. And I understand there are civil liberties issues. Cash is not going to disappear completely, as I understand it. A particular concern for me because the Mint is just down the road, providing employment in one of our parishes, so uh, in the diocese. Uh, and they say there's actually a lot more use of cash, oddly enough, but for different things. So particularly, uh, uh, and particularly for people who have, are on very low incomes, being able to use cash and budget using cash is very important. So we don't want to make cash in the future look like something shameful uh, uh, or, or, or bad in any way at all. Uh, what we're just saying is we do need to be open to those people who come in with a mobile phone expecting to give something to us with the mobile phone and, and don't got any cash and never pay in any other way. And it's that group we've got to respond to, not alienating the other group. Um, I, does that answer I, I, the question? Mark, I agree. And I was just going to add something. I think um, I understand uh, what John is saying about this ne negative connotation or uh, towards 
cash. But I think our, our opportunity here is to promote safe giving and talk about you can donate uh, money because lots of people have been saving it up during lockdown, their envelopes, etc. But our guidance is we leave it three days and for them to to bear with us to to you know if they can give online, give online. If they can't, it's about safe giving mm-hmm. and it's all then about our treasurers. How do we handle cash safely? How do we minimise the transfer? And so I think our message around. Uh, handling cash is around safe giving um, and as I said at the beginning we've got to think of ways of bringing digital giving up to the same level as we currently talk about cash giving because right now I think it's probably down here and creeping up but we do need to be talking more about digital giving and promoting the opportunities but not alienating this group who are going to be giving but promoting a more safe way of giving these opportunities to merge both, I think. Okay, we have another question from Pauline Page. Uh, it's more of a statement, really. She says, We are wanting to increase online giving, a button on the website, text giving, and a contactless device, but they are overwhelmed by so many options. <laughs> Everyone is jumping in on online giving and donations and uh, as a team and I'll, I'll hand on to mark in a moment but we are going to make these options a little bit easier for you i think one of the things we are looking at are what are those options what ones could we recommend and um we're going to be doing some future work around looking at these kind of options and and recommending ones that you may want to consider mark is there anything you wanted to say around um, the amount of yes, choice. Yes, yeah, as, as, um, as Matt was saying, it's, it's becoming a crowded market, really. Um, we can't, as a diocese, say use X, but we will certainly narrow it down for you, and, and that's quite proper and right to do that. Um, parish buying is our guide, which is working across England and Wales, uh, and they have a lot of information. And if they haven't got a contract with someone, that doesn't mean to say they're not any good, um, but there, there may be some issue and certainly if they have got a contract with someone we know that they're a good value for money and they're an ethical supplier so it's a positive it doesn't mean to say they're, they're not if they're not with them uh, but they are so we're guided by that and if you have too much choice you're likely to we know that too much choice makes people dissatisfied whatever they choose which is an odd thing so having a bewildering amount of choice, psychologists are now saying, well, how do we cut choice down again so people are more satisfied? And, and you may be aware of that. So that's why we tend to say, well, what, what we're saying, if you look at our website, we've done it. We say gift direct. Then there's a giving button, which we're using um, uh, PayPal. But, uh, there are others I used. I, I gave using another one recently to test if it worked. Uh, just giving. And that's some marvellous features, and then text giving. So it's just a priority, really. This is the number one, this is number two, number three. There is more, and there's more we need to explore, but just start start with something simple, some clear, simple message. And I don't think this is a beta, those of you who remember, I'm aging myself now, I realize Betamax and, and VHS. Uh, you know, I don't think it's that. I don't think these are going to disappear. I think some will drop out the market and will be on another one. There's not much difference in price. Or the online buttons. Mark, I mean, the, um, I think the, Pauline mentioned tap to, to pay as well and sum up machine has yeah. got a good offer on, hasn't it? I yeah. seem to remember. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we that's a good uh, starting point. It, it is a good starting point, and we, we're fairly strong ground with that. The uh, the um, parish buy of you sum up uh, extensively, and we have as well. We use it in the office. The reason for that is they wanted to work with us. Uh, iZettle are out there, they didn't pitch, they're there, we could buy them, but they didn't pitch to us. Some up actively came and wanted to encourage Church of England and Anglican churches to join them and gave us some good deals. So they want our business and that's why we're going with them, but there's not much between them. We'll put a link um, when we email you um, in, uh, later on um, with, with a link to the sum up and some of the text for giving options as well. Sorry, mm-hmm. Gareth, there's there other, oh, go on, Jan. That we just need to make it easy for people so that again if you've got a congregation that is happy with contactless tap to go maybe a first quarter call online giving it's giving people that whole range of options but making it easy and promoting it 
I think, you know, having options available without promotion, you might as well not have them available. You need to promote that these various options are there to allow people to give in the easiest way. I agree. And also in terms of text to give, and I've, all, I've seen Gareth Coombs, for example, will say going live in five minutes on this page and then a text to give link so that people um, who want to give while they're watching the service can give. I've been on other services where people, they have like a host. Um, so the, the priest is, you know, is, is, is doing worship and then someone in the chat on Facebook is the, the sort of host and they'll post um, how people can give while they're, while they're um, watching the service online. I think those are some really good opportunities. I think Jan is absolutely spot on. You can have all the tech in the world, but it's about how we promote and how we use it. Putting it every week in your newsletter, putting it at least a minimum of once a week on Facebook about ways to give and linking it to the activities that you're doing will make people want to give more. But online church... You know, people are sat there with their mobile phones. I would be looking to put, if you've got a text to give number, I would be looking to put that in the comments so people can, can give while they watch and say, instead of the offertory, perhaps you would like to, to text to give. Or then sending, uh, posting a link afterwards to Gift Direct and encouraging people to sign up. There's lots of people um, that we know are wanting to give and we've just got to make it easier for them as well. Sorry, Gareth, go ahead. Uh, I'll just say that um, relating to the question you guys just answered, Noel Armstrong has said that the Church of England has a good video on how to set up a sum up account and install an online button. Fantastic. We'll cool. share that. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is from Colin Rossiter. It says, I understand that Cundiff gave the least rebate on power share, i.e. 25% of the three month amount. Others gave 40 to 50% or more, he has been told. Why is our diocese so different? When will we when will we see more of the grants that have been given? Do you want me to cover that one? Yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, thank you for that, Colin. Um, the DBF looked at the um, total pot that was available for quarter two um, and came up with three schemes. So the first of which, as you've said, is a twenty five percent rebate of quarter two parish share directly back to all parishes. Um, so that money has been paid across um, to all bar one of our parishes um, and that, that came to around about £263,000 of grants that have gone out. Um, Mark talked earlier about the emergency support fund, that's tranche two. So there's £100,000 available there um, where parishes and ministry areas can apply um, for support, emergency support. The turnaround time is really rapid with grants. Um, we um, have had nine applications so far, we've paid out five grants already or in process um, and we're starting to see the grants come through now um, on kind of a much more regular basis than when we first launched the scheme. Um, the sorts of things that we've seen coming through to that scheme are um, the Land of Deanery, we're looking at a refugee project which has been impacted by COVID, so that um, the scheme has provided some support towards their rental costs. Um, uh, another parish had just done a massive re rebuild um, and had taken out a diocesan loan, um, which they were hoping to pay back in installments and the interest on that loan through the use of their new community space, which of course went straight into lockdown, they couldn't use the building. So we've supported um, them through with some of their interest payments, but they have repaid the whole of the loan back to us. Um, so that's the sort of thing, but it's anything really. If you're struggling that your reserves aren't allowing you to pay your insurance bills, please just talk to one of us. Um, and the third tranche of funding is into a longer term support fund. So we're looking to assist ministry areas so to ensure they're financially resilient into the future um, because we did receive the grant from the representative body on the basis that we met certain conditions and that is looking at the, the longer term strategic support and the structures of, of the diocese. So um, that will be developed into the autumn so more details will be available then um, and there's a possibility of further funding into quarter three. 
Um, what I would say is each diocese has looked at things differently and allocated their funds on a different basis. Um, and that's what the DBF felt was the best way to support Landaff parishes at the moment. Um, we're obviously assessing the situation the longer lockdown goes on or as eases as restrictions ease. Um, we're, we're assessing what that means for sharing for parishes and ministry areas. Um, but the main message I'd like to try and get across to everyone today is that we are here to help so that if you can engage with Mark and I, um, I'm saying this now, but I'm going on holiday at the end of today for two weeks. So if you can engage with Mark for the next two weeks, but then I will be back. Um, we can help if you engage with us and talk to us in, in what your issues are and another kind of quick plug that the old schemes are still there as well so yes we've got the um, COVID grant schemes available but the mission fund is still there the care of churches emergency church repair grants are still there we've still got the opportunity of dust and loans so please whatever your issue is if you can engage with us and feed it through the main Diocese of Lambda email address and then it will get to um, the most appropriate member of staff who will deal with it quickly. Great, just a quick time check. We've got about uh, a few minutes left and I think we've got a couple of one or two other questions left. Gareth, I think we've probably got time for about two. Okay. Uh, Beth Ann Williams has asked, uh, listening to this, I feel we're in the dark ages and walking around the village collecting envelopes from our parishioners. We are starting at zero, where do we start? And then she says, no, not actually zero because we have people using Gift Direct. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing yeah. Gift Direct would be uh, one of the first things you could do. Start. Keep yeah. trying to move people on to, to Gift Direct. But Mark, is there anything you'd you'd like to add? No, only that we are moving. I think that was the, I was trying to be encouraging from what we're saying, people are moving and, and realizing we, we've got to do that. And uh, I, I can only say from an older perspective, if you like, and I am older, but uh, that uh, I was at one meeting where the treasurer said to me, look, this is my phone, he had a little Nokia phone, but he understood that people were not using Nokia as little old Nokia phones. He knew he was in a different group. And he was saying, how do we work? How do we help? How do I help people who just think differently to communicate and give to my church? And he was fully supportive of that. So I think it's first thing is know where we are and know there's a problem and there's a way out of it. Uh, you know, there is a light and we're moving towards it. And hopefully the light at the end of the tunnel is not the headlamp of an oncoming locomotive. That's my little joke for the day. <laughs> Great, thanks for that one, Mark. I'll go, into Christmas. I'll go in this year's Christmas cracker. <laughs> um, Beth, and don't, don't despair. We're going to send out all the links because, uh, you know, if you, you keep on promoting Gift Direct, but also text to give is probably one of the easiest things people can do. Mm. Um, and we'll send you a link. So we will, uh, you know, and if you want to talk through any more options, um, we are around to do that. But Beth, and make a start with promoting Gift Direct and also uh, text to give and PayPal would probably be the first things to, to suggest because they are the easiest easiest things that you can do and then keep on promoting how people can give if they haven't got cash um, and we will be continuing promoting these services and sending out all the links that we've mentioned in the in uh, in, a, in the next few days but Beth and stick around also and everyone else for other um, webinars that we've got and before we close I just want to talk you through what those are going to be so allow me to share my screen a moment and I'll talk you through, hope you can all see what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So upcoming webinars. Today has been all about reopening after lockdown and thinking about some of the challenges and how we respond to those. Our next one then on the 6th of August is looking at how we can preach about generosity. Fortunately, Mark does this quite often and uh, is going to talk us through how to preach generosity. Um, promoting giving on social media. Um, go on, Nella, I'll take that one. Is that right, Mark? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, we're also going to be doing one on setting up a giving page. I know a few people have been asking us about donate buttons and, and what's the best thing to do. So we're going to have a session on setting up a giving page. 
storytelling and encouraging generosity through communications and marketing. That's one we've got coming up in September. And the final one then in October is about how you can create a giving strategy because you want to know how successful you've been. And over those couple of weeks, with these webinars, we will have taught you and shown you a lot of things that will go into your giving strategy so that you can keep on track of how well you're doing it. So those are the ones that we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks. A link will go out after this survey, I'm sorry, after this webinar where you can give your thoughts about how today has gone for you. And you can also tell us what else you would like to hear from the team that would help you promote and encourage generosity. But for now, um, I'll stop sharing my screen and just ask the panelists, is there anything final they'd like to say before we, before we finish? Mark, anything from you? I'd just like to say thank you uh, for everyone uh, joining us and do give us feedback because this has got to be a, a, a conversation. Jan, before you go on holidays, anything you want to say? I can just yeah, reiterate the thanks to everyone for joining us and just please keep engaging with us. Um, you know, we are here to help. So, um, yeah, keep in contact with us. And apologies for the two that were online before. We realised everyone was online to listen to our waffle and chit chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll know for next time thank you everyone for uh, taking part this has been generosity matters uh, webinar number one look forward to hearing from you your feedback and uh, meeting you in the next webinar which is all on our website links coming out please do give you your feedback and help us improve the way we deliver our services for you so take care and have a wonderful day everyone <laughs>